And what I want to talk about is how we can hunt our egos into the outfield or how we can deal with losing a piece of work that we've looked after for so long and generally successfully. How you guys have managed to deal with that hopefully successfully and any tips you have for the people that are listening at home what do i mean by professional pride well professional pride is well it kind of tells you what it is but it's it's pride in a job that you've done is it pride Um, in being a professional i mean pretty much yeah i mean that it can come in many different ways oh the obvious one is work but lee's mentioned a lot that he's done a lot of diy around his house probably quite proud of the work that he's put into that and if somebody came around, you should see the results. Was like, you should be proud. I should be proud. Yeah, we should all be someone, proud. Someone might come around that's a professional redecorator and be like, "Cool, those skirting boards look a bit rubbish," and that would really wound Lee's ego. Wouldn't like it one bit. Wouldn't happen either. That's why I did a little bit of that this morning. In fact, I feel that's not the point didn't... of your conversation. So no. I'll stop now. Just here. Right no, that's all right. Me. That's all right. It can come in many forms of life. Professional pride. You, you can. It comes over many different banners. Personal pride, professional pride, whatever. Sometimes. You, your partner or whoever might make you a meal that isn't as good as the last time they made it. And if you choose to be brave enough to make a comment on things like that, then that can wound their personal pride as well. How we are receptive to that often criticism compared to what we display. Now, the flippant response, if someone was to critique your work or something you've done at home, would be to be like, I don't care what you think, go away, or words to that effect. That isn't always as easy to do in a work environment. You have to kind of take these things on on the chin. And a lot of the time with change at work, unless you are the person that runs the business or the area or the department, the decision's taken out of your hands. There's nothing you can really do about it. That pride being wounded and that ego being wounded, you don't really have anyone to vent to that will actually be able to make a change to what is happening. So it almost falls on deaf ears. I wouldn't say it does feel fall on deaf ears, but it can do in terms of the outcome. Because sometimes the need of business or the department or the team is more than the need to satisfy one person's ego. I'm sure those of us that have worked in a corporate world or even in not a corporate world, it happens in all walks of life. You know, people that work in kitchens that are trained up to be, people start as pot washers and they work their ways up to be sous chefs and then head of house. You know, if somebody comes in and makes some clean clean pots or plates or whatever, that can wound their ego as well because you've developed yourself through and you shouldn't be above doing any job. I feel, firmly accept that. Once you've learned to do something more and you've developed out of that original instruction or the the baby steps of a role, you, you don't feel as though you need to go back and do that sometimes. So it, it can it comes in many forms and many different ways. But the most common way I would say is, you know, something gets changed around you and you have to kind of adapt to losing a responsibility or an area that you actually put a lot of effort into. Uh-huh.